increasingly our business has been about automation and, and digitalization, so much so that we really bet the farm on that in spending over $10 billion over the last 10 years on software. Um, so we'll, we'll be as well known today for our uh, software products, probably as our motors historically. So um, of course we have a, a history in automotive uh, propulsion as well. You just saw a moment ago, um, a Siemens uh, car, an electric car called the Victoria. Graham, I think you're uh, in no danger in the organization. Uh, this little baby, I could do a Siemens car. I had about 50 miles of range um, and a power output of about three and a half kilowatts. So uh, I think it's fair to say that we have uh, moved on uh, since then, of course. Um, you know, this, this idea of digitalization, it's something that we, we talk about, um, uh, you know, in industry, um, we, we think about it in terms of manufacturing. And one of those really viral ideas uh, of, you know, industry 4.0, of course, um, gives us a, a bit of a framework to think about this. And we've, we've seen this graphic many times, but essentially, you know, this, this idea of industry four is of course, um, one that, um, we think about in manufacturing uh, and I I'd agree with Sir Brian that of course the uh, the future is one in which we're seeing exciting outcomes that are based very much on the uh, combination of advanced technologies so with at Siemens we're thinking much more now about the way that products come to life the way that they're made and the way that they evolve uh, such that rather than sort of thinking of just industry four we're thinking much more specifically about the digital twin of the product, a digital twin of the production, and a digital twin of the performance of those systems. In terms of that, you know, the digital twin of the products, our products typically are electromechanical, um, like cars and planes, they need uh, engineers who understand that combination of mechanical, electrical, and software systems. And we're going today much, much further than the, um, you know, computer-aided design models of the recent past, and we're thinking much more about computer-aided manufacturing, simulation, um, and, and verification, of course, that brings prototypes to market faster. And of course, these sort of tools help uh, the automotive companies bring down those, what, what typically were seven-year cycles for major changes, have been brought down to sort of uh, three to four years for major changes, and, and of course, uh, with us as consumers driving change, much shorter timescales for interim update because of the, the virtualization of the process. But where we're seeing a lot of um, progress made is in the factory um, and in the virtualization of the factory as well, the combination of the digital twin of the product, uh, informing the way that we then go on to automate the factory. And we're using increasingly the, the digital tools to think about the human uh, in the factory operating with the machines. Uh, we still need people to come up with lean designs and have the right culture, of course, uh, but, but augmented by technology increasingly in thinking about digital twins of the production environment. Um, and increasingly, we're uh, thinking about cloud technologies that um, enable us to think more about data and uh, you know, using that to um, better inform our decisions. So we're using cloud technologies increasingly as well, with it being ubiquitous um, and very powerful these days. Of course, you know, the, uh, the infrastructure is there to support some quite complex decision making um, you know, in the cloud that if we get that right, should provide a closed loop back to better inform design. Now let me give you a couple of examples of um, you know, what I mean about technologies that when they are, come together, it can become much more powerful. So we'll, we'll recognize that cybersecurity, for example, supported by artificial intelligence is one. Cloud, when it's used in co combination with the sort of deterministic edge-based computing, means that, again, you can achieve some very clever things. And of course, um, additive manufacturing with generative design is something that we're really seeing a lot more of now in the automotive industry. And I'll just show you a couple of examples to bring that to life. So this is one where um, it's a, a prototype uh, of a 3D printed car. Um, it, it was designed using virtual reality um, and of course a team that could think about just as car companies do today and Ford will have an advanced capability in this. Um, but it was then also using artificial intelligence. You can see that the subframe which is um, an aluminium um, 
a hybrid uh, manufacturing process of uh, printing, uh, metal deposition and CNC um, was designed with AI in mind that takes away unnecessary weight from the structure, but giving it all of the strength it needs uh, in the right places. So AI plus 3D printing plus VR together means that you've got essentially a, a printable car. Um, so that's definitely worth a quick look um, if you want to have a look at that as a design project. Uh, Mouse McCoy and his team in California have been looking at that for a couple of years. Moving on very quickly to the manufacturing environment and um, you know for us making sub-assemblies and uh, electronics we're thinking about how data can better drive decisions as well. Not necessarily big data but the right data and, and here's a typical challenge of uh, you know a cutting operation that um, with failures brings the line down and what we found is that training algorithms in the cloud around the right data, in this case, the speed of the, the drill, the current consumed, we can learn about the antecedents to failure and, and indeed have been able to use predictive uh, maintenance to 100% stop the sort of machine failures that were bringing our lines down and save, in this case, just a couple of hundred thousand euros a year. But it, it shows that the technology now, the predictive nature of the technology uh, enables us to make progress. What I'd like to do is pick up on Graham's um, comments, if I may, and just add just a, a Siemens perspective to that, because I, I agree wholeheartedly that we've had a, a recent opportunity to, to really test this. And if we were ever to have you know, believed in digital engineering and, and what that meant, uh, we've been tested really with the, uh, the consortium coming together um, to, uh, to scale up. Uh, rapidly the manufacturer of, uh, in this case, the, the Pendulum ESO2 device. And, you know, the, the nature of the challenge is taking essentially a workshop uh, environment to high volume manufacturer. And you're, you're looking on the right hand side there at a, a photo from the gantry of the Airbus site at Broughton, uh, which features two of the sub assemblies for the, the Pendulum device. But I thought rather than me present it, what I wanted to try and do was share with you a little video that one of our apprentices put together to, to show some of the manufacturing or the design and manufacturing processes uh, involved in the background. What you're looking at is a digital simulation of the Airbus facility. These are the flow store systems, the workstations. You've got an absorber sub-assembly on the, on the workstation bench there. Um, you can see that this was uh, designed uh, with the resources in mind, the flow of materials around the, the factory, um, thinking about the operators and of course the redelivery of components to each of the different workstations. The computer-aided model helped to inform uh, essentially electronic work instructions or uh, digital aids as we've called them of course because this is a regulated medical process that the Siemens Health and Ears colleagues helped us to, uh, to really think about as a consortium uh, and that meant that operators could be trained offline, 500 of them in advance of um, you know, becoming uh, manufacturing uh, volunteers. Now here as well we've got the computer-aided manufacturing software showing one of the machined fixtures so this is a production aid that helped those operators uh, bring components together, in this case, the flow meter subassembly. And you can see that this is a, a digital model validating the tool parts of the um, device itself. Uh, and there it is, you can see in context with the back plate of the flow meter itself. So it was our colleagues at Siemens in Congleton that were able to bring this together. And you can see a zoomed out version now of actually two of the subassemblies. On the right, um, we've got the flow meter on the left, the absorbers. Um, being actually put together in that footprint uh, to enable production to take place. Now, ordinarily, of course, you would have thought we would have taken months to do something like that. And the accelerated nature of this um, activity meant that it, really the conventional design that we'd started with as a consortium was taken apart in 48 hours and turned around into this um, design, um, which sounds absolutely remarkable that I I promise you was true that uh, the team had to think about um, the medical regulators requirements for making the sub-assemblies plus um, the uh, um, social distancing requirements, two meter envelopes around each of the operators which was new and of course um, you know the optimization needed to, to be able to put these two sub-assemblies into the footprint and, and that was all validated in a, a digital model that very quickly came about and gave the consortium the opportunity to um, invest. If I just uh, finish perhaps on um, this final point, and Graham and I had a quick chat earlier in the week, and I, I know that you, you felt it would be a great additional um, idea to, to bring to this audience, but 
you know, that, that principle of um, the consortium coming together and Graham, you talked about motivation, mission and momentum. I think, you know, transferring some of that to our young engineers actually and giving them a, a hackathon challenge related to this demonstrated to all of us once again that it's possible to use digital tools and turn around um, you know designs that really help us in manufacturing in this case to bring down the, the calibration time of one of the sub assemblies a flow meter which was costing sometimes up to 40 minutes uh, and over a four day period these apprentices and graduates um, gave us a design that would reduce that calibration time down just to two minutes um, and this was based again on a, a digital design, a simulation, machining and 3D printing uh, that will get implemented on that line and uh, I think it's fair to say we, we saw in this um, all of those steps uh, come to life in, a, in record time uh, and found some very very motivated uh, young professionals on the back of it.